one autumn i went to stay for the hunting season with some friends in a chateau in picardy my friends were fond of practical joking as all my friends are i do not care to know any other sort of people when i arrived they gave me a princely reception which at once aroused distrust in my breast we had some capital shooting they embraced me they cajoled me as if they expected to have great fun at my expense i said to myself look out old ferret they have something in preparation for you during the dinner the mirth was excessive far too great in fact i thought here are people who take a double share of amusement and apparently without reason they must be looking out in their own minds for some good bit of fun assuredly i am to be the victim of the joke attention during the entire evening everyone laughed in an exaggerated fashion i smelled a practical joke in the air as a dog smells game but what was it i was watchful restless i did not let a word or a meaning or a gesture escape me everyone seemed to me an object of suspicion and i looked distrustfully at the faces of the servants the hour rang for going to bed and the whole household came to escort me to my room why they called to me good night i entered the apartment shut the door and remained standing without moving a single step holding the wax candle in my hand i heard laughter and whispering in the corridor without doubt they were spying on me i cast a glance around the walls the furniture the ceiling the hangings the floor i saw nothing to justify suspicion i heard persons moving about the outside of my door i had no doubt that they were looking through the keyhole an idea came into my head my candle may suddenly go out and leave me in darkness then i went across to the mantelpiece and lighted all the wax candles that were on it after that i cast another glance around me without discovering anything i advanced with short steps carefully examining the apartment nothing i inspected every article one after the other still nothing i went over to the window the shutters large wooden shutters were open i shut them with great care and then drew the curtains enormous velvet curtains and i placed a chair in front of them so as to have nothing to fear from without then i cautiously sat down the armchair was solid i did not venture to get into the bed however time was flying and i ended by coming to the conclusion that i was ridiculous if they were spying on me as i suppose they must while waiting for the success of the joke they had been preparing for me have been laughing enormously at my terror so i made up my mind to go to bed but the bed was particularly suspicious looking i pulled at the curtains they seemed to be secure all the same there was danger i was going perhaps to receive a cold shower bath from overhead or perhaps the moment i stretched myself out to find myself sinking under the floor with my mattress i searched in my memory for all the practical jokes of which i had ever had experience and i did not want to be caught ah certainly not certainly not then i suddenly besought myself of a precaution which i consider one of extreme efficacy i caught hold of the side of the mattress gingerly and very slowly drew it toward me it came away followed by the sheet and the rest of the bedclothes i dragged all these objects into the middle of the room facing the entrance door 
I made my bed over again as best I could, at some distance from the suspected bedstead, and the corner which had filled me with such anxiety. Then I exhausted all the candles, and groped my way. I slipped under the bedclothes. For at least another hour I remained awake, starting at the slightest sound. Everything seemed quiet in the chateau. I fell asleep. I must have been in a deep sleep for a long time, but all of a sudden I was awakened with a start by the fall of a heavy body tumbling right on top of my own body, and, at the same time, I received on my face, on my neck, and on my chest a burning liquid which made me utter a howl of pain, and a dreadful noise, as if a sideboard laden with plates and dishes had fallen down, penetrated my ears. I felt myself suffocating under the weight that was crushing me and preventing me from moving. I stretched out my hand to find out what was the nature of this object. I felt a face, a nose, and whiskers. Then, with all my strength, I launched out a blow over this face. But I immediately received a hail of cuffings, which made me jump straight out of the soaked sheets and rush in my nightshirt into the corridor, the door of which I found open. Oh, stupor! It was broad daylight. The noise brought my friends hurrying into the apartment, and we found, sprawled over my improvised bed, the dismayed valet, who, while bringing me my morning cup of tea, had tripped over this obstacle in the middle of the floor, and fallen on his stomach, spilling, in spite of himself, my breakfast over my face. The precautions I had taken in closing the shutters and going to sleep in the middle of the room had only brought about the interlude I had been striving to avoid. Ah, how they all laughed that day! 